Hello Booktube, this is Johnny. Hoping you're having a good evening. I'm going to drink some orange juice here. So yeah, it is a Wednesday night here in West Michigan. It is 8.52 at night. It is July the 12th. We're going into the middle of the month. It's hot and humid here and we have the air conditioner on, which is uh, really cool. When we first moved into this house 26 years ago, we didn't have central air. And I remember it would get so hot in this house. I don't remember how long we've had an air conditioner, central air system. Uh, yeah. My wife is good at remembering things like that. I can't remember. I always ask her, now when when did we do that? Or when did we buy that? Or when did we go there? And she always remembers. And uh, you would think since I keep a detailed diary of my life, of our life, uh, that I remember such things, but I don't. So anyway, I'm sitting here tonight and I've been reading tonight uh, a real a rebel in defense of tradition, the life and politics of Dwight McDonald by Michael Wisden. I'm really enjoying this. Uh, I like uh, he was uh, well. It says here. I, I got in the mail either yesterday or today a moral temp a moral temper. The Letters of Dwight McDonald, edited with introduction by Michael Wisden. Uh, it says here in the flap of this book, In the annuals of writing on American politics and society and culture in the 20th century, Dwight McDonald's name still rings bells that are worth hearing. His books and essays have marked him as one of the century's most acute as, as, as cute observers. Now, this comprehensive selection of his letters displaying McDonald's intellect, intelligence, wit, and polemic outrage will further his reputation and engage even the most jaded readers. Selected and edited by his biographer, Michael Wisden, McDonald's letters span his lifetime. From his education at uh, Exeter, Exeter and Yale in the 1920s through his career as an editor of Partisan Review in its heyday, founder of Politics Magazine, staff writer for the New Yorker, economist, columnist for the Esquire, culture critic and essayist for major public, other major publications. The scope of his interest was extraordinary as was the diversity of friends and colleagues who became his correspondents, Mary McCarthy, Edmund Wilson, George Orwell, T.S. Eliot, Albert Camus, Leon, Leon Trotsky, C.W. C. Wright Mills, who was a, a very uh, famous economist. Uh, I, have one of, I have two of his books in our library, C. Wright Neal, Mills. To name only a few of many in this book, McDonald's letters show him grappling with the most urgent and important events of the 20th century. The Great Depression, the crisis of socialism, total war, the Holocaust, nuclear arms race, Stalinism, McCarthyism, the rise of a consumer culture, and the appearance of the new left. So that's what it gives you. That's why... Uh, I like reading about American politics, especially uh, journalists, writers, uh, people from the the New York intellectuals, people like that. So I've been reading those today. I've been reading both those today. I also got in the mail today the new Will, Will Self book. I had to order this from Amazon UK. I got it from England. Uh, this is the Will Self. Uh, he's one of my favorite writers. 
these are the recent things that he has published. Uh, he published uh, Shark, which came out in 2014. Before that, I mean, this is just his most recent. I have all of his writings down in the lower level. He's been writing for a long time. This is Umbrella by Will Self. This is shortlisted for the 2012 Man Booker Prize. This, uh, and then the last thing I read was a, he, uh, these are, are articles that he wrote this column. It's called Psychogeography, Disentangling the Modern Condrum of Psychic and Place, Words by Will Self and Pictures of, by Rod, Ralph Stedman. Ralph Stedman was the illustrator for Hunter S. Thompson's famous book, uh, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas. He did the illustrations in this Will Self book. Uh, this is the last thing I read by Will Self. I've shown this in past videos, this book. So yeah, I was excited if I got get the new Will Self novel, Phone. Uh, says, for the four characters at the heart of Will Self's brilliantly ac acute novel of our times, the 500 quid worry bead in their pocket may be both a blessing and a curse. For elderly Dr. Zachary Busser, Busner is a mysterious object, no caller ID. How should this be interpreted? Is it the caller is devoid of an identity due to some psychological or physical trauma? But also, it's his lifeline to his autistic grandson, Ben, whose own connection with technology is, in turn, a vital one. For Jonathan DeHeth, a.k.a. The Butcher, M16 agent, the phone may reveal his best-kept secret of all, that Colonel Godwin Thomas, husband, father, and highly trained tank commander, is Jonathan's longtime lover. And when technology, love, and violence finally converge in the wreckage of post-war Iraq, the colonel and the spy's dalliance would determine the destiny of nations. Uniting our most urgent contemporary concerns from the ambiguous mobile phone to a family in chaos, from the horror of modern war to the end of privacy, phone is well, Will Self's most important and compelling no novel to date. So I got that. So uh, 